Welcome to part 10 of the video lecture series for chapter 8. We're going to talk about virtual machine migration um, with uh, vCenter. Uh, using the vCenter server, you can actually perform a number of different kinds, kinds of migration. Uh, you can do a cold migration, which is to say a migration of a VM which is not running. Um, that is the only kind of migration you can do. I mean, now, granted, even with vCenter, you could do a cold manual migration of a VM from one host to another, from one data store, to, from one shared data store to another, um, between just without vCenter. But with, v, with, with vCenter server, you can do this cold. You can move a suspended VM. You can do a vSphere vMotion, which is to say you move um, the um, VM from one host to another, but the store, the, the, but the sh uh, shared storage location does not change. You can also do a storage view motion, which is to say you move the VM, the storage, the, the storage for that VM from one shared storage location to another, but the VM remains on the same host. Um, in all of those cases, with a live VM, it's running. It's uh, you've got data moving between different uh, devices while things are going, and the enhanced view motion involves moving all of the above. Um, there's also, this is something also called, called a shared nothing view motion, um, which is to say it moves from one host to another, from one shared storage to another. Um, now, one thing you'll, you'll consider very, uh, very seriously when you're trying to figure out which uh, VM migration form you're going to use is why you're doing it. Um, are you, do you have a fault tolerance issue? Are you balancing performance? Um, do you, you know, and if it's a fault tolerance thing, if it's, if it's a, if it's a performance thing and you're moving it from one host to another and it's not a storage question, that will be more, more, more likely to be a VMush. Um, on the other hand, if you have a fault tolerance issue and there's a storage, the, the question, it, it, it's, if the uh, VM is okay on the host it's on, but the storage where it's, where it is, um, where it lives, may need some, um, say, fault tol tolerance maintenance. Say, for example, um, a RAID array, a, a disk in a RAID array failed and you have to uh, break the array, rebuild it, etc. In that case, you would need um, storage fee motion. You could leave it running where it is, move it, etc. Um, so there's a comparison chart. There's a handy comparison chart, uh, which expresses a lot of these concepts. Um, with a manual cold, um, it is off, um, and this is change hosts. With a manual co host, uh, the, the, main, the power state, it is off. You can change the host, you can change the storage, you can move it between data centers, um, you can move it between CPUs. With manual suspended, uh, you can change the host, but not the storage. You can change it across data centers. Um, it needs to have the same kind of CPU. Uh, with vMotion, it's powered on. You're changing host, but not storage. You can move it between data centers, same kind of CPU. With uh, storage vMotion, uh, you are not changing host. You are changing storage. You do not move it between data centers, and it will stay on the same host. So, so the question of what kind of CPU is irrelevant. Um, with, of course, with enhanced vMotion, it can be on. You're changing both storage, both host and storage, but not between data centers. Do need to, and the CPUs do need to match. Now, in terms of uh, you, there are higher hardware requirements that you may need to meet in order for this to work correctly. Um, so, for vMotion migration, make sure the hardware requirements uh, are are squared away. Um, you're probably not going to want to move this between different kinds of CPU architectures. That's not a good idea. Honestly, you should be building these things out of. Um, Build, if you're going to build a, uh, a VMware data center, um, you should probably do as, do as much as you can to match um, the hardware of the ESXi hosts um, so you don't have to mess with anything. Now, now if you have a... Um, you can also move a, 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 a VM that is suspended cold, and then you don't have to worry about your hardware. Um, now, run it, moving a running VM, we also call this um, a hot migration. 
uh, because just like a hot swap or a hot plug of hardware, you don't have to change, take anything down to move it. So if you hear hot migration, vMotion, um, etc., we're talking about the same thing. Now, one of the other things we can do with vMotion is tie it in to the DRS, the Distributed Resource Scheduler. Um, the Distributed Resource Scheduler will make, will, can make some of those decisions for you. It can either notice things and prompt you and then act, or it can just go ahead on its own. Now, what it will do, essentially, is look for um, trigger states, um, uh, performance issues, uh, a certain level of CPU or, um, or memory usage, uh, etc., and then it can load active, dynamically load balance across your systems, um, so that if you need, as if you need to kick off, say, a manual vMotion, say, okay, move this from there here to there, it'll do it. DRS will kind of uh, watch things for you. Now, for vMotion to work, um, both hosts have to have shared storage. This does not work without some kind of shared storage, whether it's a NAS or a SAM. Um, so, because as when vMotion is running, uh, when vMotion happens, um, that what's one of the things that's going to move is the swap file, the memory file of that running VM. Because of course you're moving the full state of the thing. I mean, if it's cold, if it's off, all you have to move is the hard drive um, and the configuration files. Um, if it's running, running, you need its the, the file that contains its memory state and all of it. Um, to think about it, this you 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 could you can't have a computer without RAM. Um, so if you lose your RAM, you have no computer. You got to move that, or you got nothing. Anyway, so um, we've got a little graphic of it. So essentially, what happens here? You've got host one, host two. Um, uh, a production network, um, uh, some shared storage. You've got your user, who's uh, and what will happen here is the memory move will move across from one to the other um, on the vMotion network. Now, well, this is another thing. Um, so you've got your production network where your hosts are talking to their downstream clients and whatnot. All of this happens in a separate network. Um, it, it may be your uh, it, it, it will be more like it could be your management network. It could be a, a separate network just for vMotion or migration. So you could effectively have three or four different networks in play here. The production network, the SAM, um, the management network, the memory network. What it essentially does is it moves the memory from the, from the source host to the target host. Um, and it is the, the VM is running in both places simultaneously. Um, and then it kind of starts moving your data from one place to another, your hard drive stuff from one place to another. And then when it is, when it is ready enough, ready to go on the second host, um, the second host takes over completely. So essentially it's running on the first host while it's transferring to the second host. And as soon as the second host is ready to go, it, it transfers control of the VM there. First VM shuts down, boom, gone. Um, so the, the, it, it runs like this. Uh, the, the memory state moves from source to target. Um, after the VM is moved from source to target, the VM is quiesced on the source. Um, basically, put to sleep, quiesce, uh, it quiesce is the quiet, um, peaceful, etc. Um, quiescent, uh, silent, peaceful, quiet, etc. And once that happens, once it is silent on the host, the VM on the uh, target comes up and, and starts running. Um, I guess it's kind of a semantic question. Um, <laughs> it, so, yeah. Um, if that's a little confusing, go ahead and go back and read it again. Um, because I've heard this explained both ways, either that it, it kind of moves and then when it's good and ready, it fires up on the target and then quiesces on the, on the source. Um, but I guess semantically speaking, it's kind of a little six of one half a dozen. In any case, 
this is what they're going to want. To, this is what they're going to expect on the test. So uh, pay attention to this. Um, thanks. And the the next thing we're going to cover is um, access security, which is to say uh, permissions, um, roles, etc. Um, permissions, privileges, roles, um, users, resources, etc. We'll we'll talk about that in the next video. Um, and there's going to be, I think. A couple more uh, demos. Uh, there's one for uh, permissions, and then I'll see if there's anything in. Um, unfortunately, the V motion is not in our labs. Unfortunately. Um, so thank you. Uh, we'll be right back.